about another trailer that uh, recently dropped? The new Candyman trailer. And, and I think they say the word Candyman in, or the title Candyman in that trailer about 800 times. Um, I think they literally summoned Candyman a, many, many times during that trailer. But um, Candyman trailer number two. Any Anybody want to jump in on that one? Uh, Stingray, did you watch the Candyman number two trailer? Oh man, I, I really try to avoid trailers if I can because mm-hmm. they do usually spoil the movie for me. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even know they'd release a second one yet. I, I saw the first one. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of kind of worried about this one too. So mm-hmm. I'll I'll save you all my negativity. Any anybody else uh, <laughs> see the Candyman number two trailer? One? Right, go ahead, Christian. I actually like the second trailer a lot more than the first trailer. Um, look, if I say I'm not excited for the movie, I'm going to look even dumber when I go to see it. So I'm going to see it. So what is it? You know what I'm saying? Like, I hate to sound cynical, but like, if we all say, oh, I'm not, I'm not excited. You're going to see it. Uh, I mean, what, what else do I need to say? We're going to see it. That's true. Uh, so That's I, true. I, you know, I did, I thought, I thought the, uh, the trailer actually looked pr- pretty cool. I like some of those cool little Tim Burton looking, you know, silhouette deals and stuff. Uh, that, that's, that's different. Um, mm-hmm. Hey, you know, Candyman, let's go. Apparently, <laughs> they're uh, remaking everything. Why not Candyman to hell with it? You uh, know, apparently there's no candy in the uh, trailer, so that's what Marsby says. There, there is candy in the trailer. There oh, never mind. There's, some, there's a little <laughs> bit of candy. There's just, just very briefly. There's a little Marzi, candy. In the Marzi trailer. didn't see it. <laughs> you, you could have missed it if you blinked. You may have, you may have missed it. There is candy in the trailer, just briefly. Um, the kid, the trailer for me you know pretty much everything that i'd heard about the movie spoiler wise has been absolutely 100 percent confirmed um the hive the there is no candy man there are candy men um you even hear tony todd's voice in the trailers to let everybody know he is at least his voice is going to be in the movie um Is, is this like a cult of Chucky scenario we've got going here? It is. <laughs> oh God, that sounds awful. Sorry. It does. Awful. Yeah. The it, what I've heard about the movie just really doesn't sound good. And I mean, really, I think any hardcore fans of the original Candyman are going to be like, going to be kind of just. I mean, Tony Todd is Candyman, and then mm-hmm. they're going to be like, well, no, 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 no. They're, he's just one of them. Let, let me give a shout out here to uh, Nico. Nico, thank you for the ten dollars super chat, sir. Gonna hit the gas station for cheese puffs, but I'll be back to class in fifteen. <laughs> hey y'all! All we'll, right, we'll, right. Just, we'll just we'll just pause for fifteen. We'll wait for you to get back. Let's just let's, let's oh, just wait. pause. All right, we'll we'll let's take a break here. Uh, let's let me find something to fill in the <laughs> gaps here. Uh, Everyone, just play on your phone. I'll just I'll just I'll just keep repeating this over and over again until um, Nico gets back. No, right, I was I'm joking. I'm joking. I was wondering how long Christian you're put your that. pants on. <laughs> Brother, I don't have any on already. <laughs> we started. <laughs> You never know. You never know. I film my, when I film my videos, I don't have pants on. You, you only see. <laughs> I'm pissed. You ever, I mean, when you do your videos, you're like me. You don't see my waist down. You don't know what the hell is going on no, down nobody there. Knows. <laughs> nobody knows. Except for that reflection behind you in the frame. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, anyway. I, I, I mean, I thought, the, I thought the trailer for number two trailer for Candyman looked, I thought it looked okay, but it confirms a lot of the things that I'd heard about the movie that I are, I think are going to be problematic to use that awesome word that gets thrown around a lot these days. Problematic. Uh, especially if you're a fan of the first film, but I don't know. Um, <coughs> I, I did kind of like the sense of humor that the trailer had. I don't know if that's going to, if there's any of that in the actual film, but um, I don't know. We'll see. And they use the original Philip Glass score in the trailer, which I think this trailer, this was the 
if you're a fan trailer, this is for you because they're not using Philip Glass's score in the movie, from my understanding. And there was all that talk of, well, Tony Todd's not going to be in the film. Maybe his voice will be in the film. But now they're like, here's the trailer with the Philip Glass score, and you hear Tony Todd's voice. So, you know, if you're a fan of the first film, we got you covered until you sit down in the theater and <laughs> actually watch the thing. Actually start watching it. Yeah. Uh, MJ, what were your thoughts on the Candyman number two trailer? Um, I was actually uh, skeptical before I watched the trailer. I thought it was just going to be a complete knockoff or not have any relevance to it. Uh, but to be the new Candyman film, I was actually pleased by the trailer. It looked pretty good in the backstory, how they're going to sort of have this kind of cult thing going on where a lot of people are going to be chanting his name. And I guess he's going to just come seeking vengeance kind of on all these people. I, I liked it from what I saw. Um, I, that's what my main focus of it was, is I just wanted to make sure that it was going to be relevant. It just wasn't going to be a bore repeat of the original film. If it was going to be that, I wasn't excited. But from what I've seen, I am excited to see it, and I actually will be going to see it. Cool. Cool. Uh, Jeremy's not seen the trailer yet, but I don't think that's going to um, change his excitement in any way to see it. And now I have been saying that Candyman will probably be my first trip back to the theater. I'm actually thinking that that's not true. I think my first trip back to the theater is going to be the new Fast and Furious. So, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, my first two trips back to the theater are going to be um, maybe my last. I might be just like, I'm done with the theater at this point. I'm just not going back. Watch I actually broke this one up first because I actually said that I would not never go back to the theaters until screen releases in 2022 but now i'm going to have to bump up and actually go to the <laughs> brought me in so i will go to the theaters to see this and i just think like how we just made a comparison with halloween the same thing for Candyman. it almost seems like they're trying to give a a storyline maybe to the pleasing of the new generation like this kind of movies where it's just complete gore all through the movie hopefully i don't i hope it doesn't take away from the storyline and just we watch a movie where it's just going all over the place and make sure it has some significance and relevance right. and flow of the story. What they can do with Candyman now is any any uh, any atrocious act can turn that person into the Candyman. Mm -hmm. So if they are the victim, they're kind of like the crow. Instead of the crow, you're now the Candyman. Um. Is so. is that more like the uh, the novella that it that it's based on? No, I no, it. no. Okay. No. Um, sus sus in particular, systemic um, issues are really what's at play here. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, they touch. Yeah, in, in the trailer, they touch upon the police brutality. That's how, like the 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 can the, the candy man uh in the trailer how he meets his fate so yeah you, you know piz i have no problem admitting this now i'm thinking about it at this moment in time i'm more uh i don't know if excited's the word i mean i'm gonna go to sleep perfectly fine not not worrying about them but i'm more ready to go see Candyman than halloween at this point i mean I already it's forget the fact that i kind of know what the movie is already like before i even knew that they already announced there's another one when they announced this one so it's like okay well there's gonna be another one halloween ends this candy man i mean it's i mean i know about the film but like still i don't know what it's gonna look and sound like really till i see it so i'm more kind of ready to see this than halloween at this point you know what the hell candy man i mean and if I like it, I'll have no problem saying I'm a I like it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, no, to me, no, I'm I'm ready. I thought the trailer was pretty well done, and I liked, like I said, the really cool little Tim Burton little silhouette things and stuff like that. I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay, I mm -hmm. like that. So you know, let's go, man. I'm I'm kind of ready to see Candy. You're man. gonna love the opening credits, then. Cool. Cool. <laughs> All right, so Candyman. Um, Sort of a mixed reaction to the trailer. But, I mean, again, we're all going to go see it. Yeah, you know, Halloween and, and Candyman really make me really happy that I'm part of the Regal Club, whereas I pay my $70 or whatever it is a month for unlimited movies. Mm -hmm. Because it's, like, guilt-free to go see this stuff now. <laughs> guilt-free. There you go. 
I, I have to agree with MJ that I'm just really happy that they aren't trying to rehash Candyman because Tony Todd. I mean, don't try to rehash. I mean, I love Jordan Peele. I love his movies, but don't try to do what's already been done in a stellar way. You know what I mean? So I'm curious because I'm just one of those people that if I see something and it really affects me and I really love it the first time, I, I want to see those people, if they are still there and still, you know, like Tony Todd, still slaying the game as far as horror movies and acting and whatnot, I feel like there's no reason that they shouldn't be incorporated or in it in some way. I understand they want to bring in a new demographic and therefore they have to bring in new other characters that, you know, are a younger demographic and everything. That's great, but don't negate the whole reason that that's even being made in the first place because of the great work that you know was done before so i'm curious to see how much tony todd plays into it and don't blink oh wow okay well i don't know i mean i love jordan peele's movies i'm sure it'll be a good movie but it's probably going to be one of those that i will say it's good but i have to look at it separately from you know that kind of thing that i do so <laughs> hey this could work I'm cynical, but this could work. Um, Everything okay? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, somebody just posted that Jason Bloom announced when the Halloween Kills trailer will drop. I'm on his... Okay, so somebody... Oh, so he's, he's saying the trailer's going to drop tonight at 9.30. Cool. So, so that would coincide with the uh, the uh, sneak previews of Fast and Furious. Fast tonight. and Furious. Yep. So, yeah, he says if I were a bet, somebody somebody tweeted at him asking when's it going to drop, and he said if I were a betting man, I'd say around six thirty p.m. Pacific time. So, here in about an hour and a half. Thirty eight minutes. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Uh, all right, let's let's move on. Nico let's will be back by then. Nico will hopefully be back by then. Yes. What did let's he talk. go for? Cheetos. He went for some Cheetos. <laughs> Got to have some Cheetos. You know? Yeah. Can't watch Region Free without some Cheetos. <laughs> um, let's talk about and uh, Lauren, you may have some interest in this. Are you aware of the fact that there is a Frankenstein TV series in the works? Helmed by Otto Bathurst, who I'd never heard of until this announcement. Um, it is described as a reimagining of the source material. It is set in pre-Victorian Europe and focuses on the behaviors and obsessions of a scientist exploring the fine thread between life and death. We are uh, Bathurst has said we are inspired by this opportunity to take a really deep dive into the original text and deliver the arrestingly relevant truth that Shelley has so powerfully embedded in this incredible story. You know, I feel like one of those fish. You know, if, if you've ever gone fishing in a lake and there's sunnies and they'll hit on anything you throw in the water immediately. And, and just they get pulled up, they get unhooked, they get thrown back in, and then they hit it, hit it the next thing that goes in the water, right? Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. feel like that fish when it comes to the universal properties um, and classic literary based horror. I keep going back, and you know, it's been so long since I've like liked any version of the classic monsters, but I keep I keep jumping at the line. I don't know. There's always a Frankenstein being made either for film or for television or for stage. There's always a Dracula being made for film or television or stage. Um, you know, I, I, I can't get excited anymore until I see something and hopefully it breaks the awful legacy of mediocrity that's existed since probably I was born. I don't know. <laughs> Did anybody watch um, Penny Dreadful? No. I, I started watching the first two episodes, but I just really just couldn't keep up with it. I, I wanted to stay with it, but I just, it just wasn't good enough for me to keep going into it. Or maybe because there were other series going on at the time, so I didn't really get a chance to really get into it. But I did see the first two episodes. <clears throat> Stingray, you were nodding your head. What did, what did you what did you think of uh, 
This is the, the the show that got canceled a few years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they did three seasons. I think I saw the first two. Okay. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it. I, I wanted to like it more than I did. Okay. Because that, that show brought in, that show was kind of like um, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but taken very seriously. And they brought in vampires and they had Frankenstein and, you know, they had werewolves and the whole, they had everything in that mm -hmm. show. And I thought they, they I've not, I've, I'm only about halfway through the first season, but I thought what they're doing with Frankenstein now is kind of interesting because at this point, Frankenstein is aggressively pushing for his maker to make him a woman, to make him a companion. And I'm sure that's not going to work out, but um, that's the point where I'm at in the series right now. Uh, anybody excited for a Frankenstein television series? Woo! <laughs> uh, Christian, Christian is super stoked about it. I don't it. know, man. I mean, I, I mean, I think it's still kind of cool that like that those like they're still doing like the the or like the original monsters. Like to me, it's a little bit different from like the slasher stuff because it's not we're not too far removed from the eighties. It feels like, but like I never want to see those monsters die. Like I want you know a hundred years from now, kids to still be like oh my, you know dracula and frankenstein yeah. and whether it's movies that does that or just marketing and stuff all the time i just i don't know um doesn't upset me i'll probably check it out doesn't it say something though that every halloween you walk into a home depot or a Lowe's or whoever has the contract that year and the universal monsters as we know them from the 30s and early 40s are still being represented on things you'll buy merchandise but you don't really see any of the recent variations have any relevancy right. or any kind right. of legacy beyond that. I think you could make any of this great. I think you can make anything great. You could make a great candy man or a great Halloween kills. It just probably didn't happen, but you could make great anything. But I just worry that we keep going back to the same wells. And I wonder if we'll hit a point when these movies, when the universal films are a hundred years old and we're getting there astonishingly quickly. Well, you're trying to tell a kid to watch a hundred year old movie. That's going to be an uphill climb. And these new versions don't have the staying power of those films. So I don't know. I don't know. Bride of Frankenstein is my oh. favorite film of all time, but it's not going anywhere. It'll be brilliant for anyone who gives it a chance. You, you do make a really interesting point there because there's been so many variations of Dracula. I mean, there, how, how many, how many, Dracula television series have there been now, now they're finally getting around to Frankenstein then we'll have a new Wolfman then we'll have you know whatever but when you when you go to Lowe's or when you go to Walmart and you see the Frankenstein blow up it's the classic it's universal <laughs> Frankenstein it's not, not Gary Robert De Niro Frankenstein <laughs> it's not uh you know uh Aaron Olin, Eckhart Dracula or it's yeah, not it's not that'll it's never not, happen <laughs> yeah it's not uh, uh Gary Oldman's Dracula it's not uh uh, Frank Langella's Dracula, it's mm -hmm. Lugosi's Dracula. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, mm -hmm. so we've had all of these movies that have tried, that have, that have worked from that source material, yet the classic universal characters are still the most iconic and the most well known. So. Don't you also think, though, that it's, it's kind of almost like fashion in that? as things progress to a certain point, once they go so far, a new generation starts to deep dive and look towards the past. I mean, there are a lot of people who are, you know, even teenagers that know about, you know, 60s music and stuff like that. I mean, I always liked stuff that was way before my time and things like that. So I, I kind of feel like even if it's 100 years old, I think, for the right group, I mean, obviously it's not going to be everyone, but for the right group, I think that will be even more intriguing to them. And and hopefully, I don't know, maybe I'm just an optimist, hopefully that will make them keep going back to those originals and kind of keep, keep those alive. I mean, and especially with marketing and Halloween and things like that every year, obviously, if we keep seeing the same Dracula and Frankenstein and Wolfman, it's it's going to be like a you know 
a sign advertising it for people to go back and look at Bride of Frankenstein and things like that because it's represented from the those original films. I just feel like the bar is so high, though. That that that's the the real problem here because we're not just talking about popular films. Mm -hmm. We're talking about stone cold film classics here. Right. In the case of Bride of Frankenstein or Dracula or The Invisible Man, uh, James Whale's Invisible Man, that is. Um, even Creature from the Black Lagoon, which is a quite a bit later, you're talking about films that stand up against anything from their era, regardless of genre. So if we're going to do this, that's the standard. You have to make a film that's as good as anything that exists now, or else you're doing it a disservice. And that's uh, it's just a really high bar, and I don't think that's a bad thing, but the studios, I don't think, are living up to the promise of that. Yeah. I mean... Benicio Del Toro is not the Wolfman, right? To anyone, no one's gonna say that's my Wolfman, right? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe Jay. <laughs> <laughs> A little nervous. No, no, no. The only thing interesting, though, Piz, and this is nowhere near as as high of a caliber of a, uh, you know, as like the Universal Monsters. Bill Skarsgård's Pennywise, you could argue, as kind of stood in front of Tim Curry's like that Pennywise is now like the pop culture Pennywise. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of taken you. the forefront. So it's not impossible. Granted, this is Pennywise. Mm -hmm. This isn't Universal Monsters. But dude, that Pennywise has kind of said, watch out, Tim, I'm Pennywise now. And I mean, the the you go to the ha Halloween stores, you see that Pennywise on the shelf now. Funko Pops, toys, NECA, this, NECA, that. So it's mm -hmm. not impossible. It's not impossible. No, I mean that's yeah, that that's true. That's a good. Not point the too. same caliber, but still, it's still that's something so interesting. The only thing I'd say is I, you're right, absolutely, Christian. That goes back to me saying anything can be made great, anything can be perfect, made perfect. Um, but the difference there is, if we're being honest, that the the TV miniseries version of it was not great to begin with. Mm -hmm. We have nostalgia for it. Yeah, but it's kind of a mess. So it's Tim Curry's the best thing about it. But the difference is that first it feature film is pretty great. It's the best version of that story, I'd say, including the novel. Um, now, the second half of it, not so much. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess if you're going up against something weaker than you, you have a pretty good shot. But the problem is, do you really want to be the guy making a Bride of Frankenstein remake? I, I mean, come on. I mean, I know that Bill Condon was trying to, but I think even he realized at a certain point that there's no upside to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I got, you know, I, I loved it chapter one so much. I, I, I bought all of those Pennywise figures. I bought them all. I had a shelf just of the new Pennywise figures. Mm -hmm. And then when chapter two came out, I got a box and I went, put them in a, put them in a junk room and that's where they've stayed. So. So I met up with Piz the weekend after it chapter two came out and um, the look of hurt in your eyes, man. I was, uh, I'm still was, hurt. I'm still hurt. It, it was, it was a real thing. I mean, I, I clearly hated the film too, but I mean, I wasn't as invested as you and you, I could tell it was like, wow, wow, that, 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 that moved him that it was bad. It was, it was very painful. Very, very, it, it, it was, it, 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 I don't want to. I don't want to put it up it there with there. Rob Zombie's Halloween on that level of depression. But I mean, it was. It was. It was up there. Hey, well, uh, guess I, what? I, guess what, Piz? Guess what's coming out after the monsters? Rob Zombie's It Chapter Three, and there's going to yeah. be White Horse Pennywises. Uh, I think I'm down for that. Actually, <laughs> do it, Piz. Because <laughs> I think he could adapt the all the uncomfortable stuff from King's novel. It'd be oh fun. yeah. Yeah, he, he he's not gonna. Yeah, he's the yeah. he's the candidate. So, oh, let's yeah. do it, Biz. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what I had. Um, the new It movie with the new version. I thought I thought that it was an actual good movie for just something good. You want to watch a good horror for good? It was good, good. But what had me so like kind of frustrated is I'm like the storyline they gave us from the the characters from the original series, and they gave us a different version of Pennywise. I'm like, if they were going to do that, shouldn't they have gave us the same type of characters that matched a younger version of Pennywise? Because from the originals, he was an adult. Pennywise was an adult in the whole whole complete series. And then when it got to the new one, they made a young Pennywise with the same characters. I was like, uh, that's where they missed me with that. But it was a good film, though. It was a good film. Yeah, I just just thinking about 
it chapter two just it, it it's really knocked me down a couple pegs so let's let's move on <laughs> let's move on Subscribe to the Region Free YouTube channel and also check out the Patreon to get exclusive content and become a Regionaire.